If you're a React dev or really any kind of front end dev, I strongly encourage you to build up your UI for AI skills. AI is just super hot right now and having experience with developing for it is critical in this tough job market. But how can you get started for free? Using OpenAI doesn't cost a lot of money if you're doing just a little bit, but still you wanna be able to just play around with it and not worry about a big bill at the end. Well, the answer is local first development. We use Olama to download and run our free open source AI models on our machine. And then we'll use Versal's AI SDK to interface with it. And then we'll build a chatbot in like 20 lines of code. I'm serious, I'm not kidding. And then we'll build this cool photo reviewer app in just a few more. I'm so excited. Let's get into it. All right, so as I say, the important parts here are this AI toolkit from Versal. It's just an open source AI interface layer. It's very good though. We're gonna use Open Llama locally to actually run the models on our machine. Now you can get started by just hitting that download button. I'm going to use brew install for that since I'm on a Mac. So I'm just gonna do brew install and then Olama. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is start the Olama service. Cool. Now that we got Olama set up, let's go and install a model. So I'm gonna pick off the top of my head, just Phi 3. This is a chat model from Microsoft. There's Gemma 2. There's a bunch of different chat models that you can get. Just go over here to models and you'll actually see all of the models that you can download and run and you can run as many of them as you want to or as your machine can handle. So let's try out Phi 3 though. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go into my terminal and do Olama run Phi 3. Okay, the model's all downloaded. Let's uh, ask it to say hello. Ta-da, pretty cool. All right, so now that we've got our Olama model running, let's show you, let me show you a few more commands. I can do Olama list. That'll show me any models that I've installed. I can also do Olama RM if I just want to get rid of it. I don't want to because we just installed it. So now let's go and build our first app. So I'm going to use create next app at latest to create our first application, cheap AI chat. So of course, all of the code for this is available to you on GitHub for free in a link in the description right down below. I'll use TypeScript, ESLint, and I do want to use Tailwind CSS in this case. I'm going to use the app router, and there we go. Looks like we're all set up. Let's bring it up in VS Code. All right, now we've got to add some libraries. The first one we're going to add is AI. That's the AI toolkit from Vercel. Next up, we're going to bring the Olama NPM module into our app. That's what we use on the command line to run any Olama commands and connect any models and any of that. So that's going to actually interface with Olama. And then to connect those together, I'm gonna to use the Olama AI provider. It's a nice NPM module that connects the Versal AI SDK to Olama. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna do is build out the home page. So let's go over to page and I'm going, just going to replace this with an empty page. Now that empty page is going to be a client component because it's all going to be interactive. Now the first thing we need to bring in is the use chat hook from the AI SDK. Now that AI SDK has a React section, so it works with all kinds of frameworks, also React. So in the React module, you get the use chat hook. Now we're gonna call that use chat hook with no options, and we're gonna get back a bunch of things. We're gonna get messages, that's the messages that we've had with the chatbot. And then the current input value, that's gonna be for the text field where we input stuff. Handle input changes is what we're gonna use on the on change of that input field, and then handle submit which is what we're gonna call when we actually want to hit the return and then send the message to the AI. Next, we'll build out the starter JSX. We'll have a flex box, we're in, in a column, full width, a little bit of padding on the sides, and then we'll stretch it out so that it uses up the entirety of the vertical space. Next, we need a way to send a message to the server. So we'll create a form tag. It'll have an on submit using that handle submit that we got back from use chat and then an input field, which is connected to that input. We give the value as the input and the on changes handle input change. Pretty easy. Now, finally, the last thing we want to do is just display the messages. So we'll add some code to iterate through all those messages with map and then just display them in a nice little output. Okay, so far, so good. Let's bring that up. So I'm gonna bring up my simple browser. 
go to localhost 3000, and that's looking pretty good. Let me anchor that over on the side there. Okay, nice. Now if I were to do something like say hello, it's not going to do anything, and that's because we don't actually have an endpoint for it to connect to to send the messages to. Now by default, since I haven't changed any options on UseChat, the API that it wants to connect to is slash API slash chat. So we're gonna go and create that. So go back over here in our app, create API chat, and then route.ts, that's a route handler in Next.js. Then I'm gonna handle the post method in here. That's going to receive the request when we get the handle submit from the client. All of the messages are gonna come in as messages in JSON. And now we actually wanna start building out our connection to the AI. So the first thing we need is the create olama function from olama AI provider. And we'll just invoke that. That'll create our olama interface. And next we wanna bring in streaming text response, stream text and stream data from AI. That's gonna handle the streaming response back from the AI. We don't just want it to come out as one go, right? We want it to actually go token by token. Otherwise you'd be there waiting for a while for the response. So we're gonna use this streaming function that we got built into it. All right, now we get to call our AI and that's it. All you gotta do is just stream text. You give it the model, in this case, Olama with that Phi3 model that we added and then the messages. And then we return a streaming text response with the AI stream that we get back out of that result. All right, let's give it a go. Whoa, seriously, it was that easy. How cool is that? Okay, I'm gonna ask something a little bit more complicated. What are the steps in bathing a stinky dog? All right, now, as you can see, what's coming out here is markdown. That's the, for example, these double stars, that should be bold. So just to add a little bit more complexity here, let's go and bring in React Markdown to format that. Now we'll launch the server again. We'll go back into our page. We'll bring in the Markdown component, and then we'll just wrap everything in the content in Markdown. All right, let's try it one more time. How to bathe a stinky dog. And there we go. Now you can start to see we got the bolding in there. This looks really nice. And that's it. As you can see, this is just super easy to do. Of course, all the code is available to you for free on GitHub. And you can run this thing anywhere. Now that you've got Olama installed on your machine, you could run it on a plane. You could run it at the park while you're watching your kids play in the park. You can do anything with this. It's fantastic. Jump on in, have some fun, learn AI. I'm telling you, it'll help you in the job market. So the second application is a bit more complex. It just kind of shows how to use AI in a non-chat, more applied style. We're going to allow the user to drop a photo onto the app, and then we're going to use a local AI to kind of review the photo and tell us what's good about it, what's bad about it, how it can be improved. Okay, so let's now go and build our second app. So the second model they're gonna bring in is Lava Llama. Lava is an image AI and Llama 3 is an LLM and they've kind of squished those two together. And now you've got a really good image AI that can do LLM type chat work. Okay, cool. So let's bring that in. We're gonna use O Llama Run Lava Llama 3. And now that I've got that installed, I'm gonna use it to describe this image of my dog Murph. So now I'm going to say, describe this image, give it a path, downloads, dog.jpg. <laughs> How cool is that? And it's local. We don't have to pay anything for that. That is so awesome. It's amazing what you can do in open source nowadays. Okay, so now let's go and build an app around this. So again, I'm gonna use next, I'm gonna call it Cheap AI Photo Reviewer. I'll use all the same options as last time, including Tailwind. I'm gonna jump in there with VS Code, and I'm gonna speed run this a little bit. Of course, all the code is available to you for free, so after we're done, you can take a look at it, download it, try it out for yourself. So we're gonna bring in that AI library, Olama, Olama AI provider, as we did before, React Markdown. I'm also gonna bring in React Drop Zone, since we wanna create a drop target, so you can just drop your image onto the app. This time I'm gonna start with the API first. So we'll create a new directory called API chat again, and then route.ts. And I'm gonna do all the stuff we did before, creating the llama and getting all the stuff set up for AI. But the prompt is gonna look entirely different. So what we're gonna get from the JSON in this case are base64 encoded files, and then we're gonna send those off to the AI. The way that we're gonna do that is call that stream text function from AI. We're gonna give it the Olama adapter with lava llama three, 
and then we're going to give it some messages. Now, this is the prompt engineering that everyone talks about. You give it some messages, and in this case, you're going to set up the system. You're going to tell it what it needs to behave like. And then in this case, we're going to say that the second message comes from the user, the user asking, please review this photo, and then we're going to send it the encoded image file. Okay, so we've got our API all set up. Let's now go and build out our page. We're going to use that use chat hook from AI, but we're also going to have these encoded files. They're going to be the files that we get from drop zone. Next, we'll bring in the use drop zone hook. That's what's actually going to do the work of accepting those files, turning those into base64, and then adding those files to the list of encoded files. And then we finally, we add a use effect that says, cool, and we got some new encoded files, then fire off that handle submit and just submit those to the API server. All right, let's give it a go and see. Unfortunately, that simple browser doesn't handle drag and drop. So I'm going to use Arc for this. I'm gonna drag my photo of Murph on there. And now we see it's having a good look at our photo and boom, we've got the output from the AI mind blowing. Of course, all the code for this example and the other one is available to you on GitHub for free. I encourage you to play around with it. AI is something you're really going to want to get into to enhance your job skills and employability at this point. Well, I hope this got you excited about learning how to build UIs for AI, how to do it on your own machine, local first. If you do that, let me know in the comments right down below. I would love to hear about it. And if you're into advanced content like this, go over to pronextjs.dev. That's where my new course on pronextjs is just about to be deployed. Sign up for the newsletter today. You'll get access to two free tutorials, one on state management, one on forms management. And I got to tell you, the first part of this new course is going to be on building a chat application just like this, but a lot more advanced and using all of the cool features of the Next.js app router. I'm really stoked about it. Of course, in the meantime, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It really helps out with the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this and click on that bell if you want to be notified about it. I'll see you on the next Blue Collar Coder.